to complexity made simple. And in this video's news newsletter, what we're going to take a look at is running a designed experiment with pass fail data. So it's a DOE, but your output is pass fail. Bad news. Now, this is a response to a question that I had uh, over email. So somebody sent me a message. If you want to send me messages, folks, help with certain techniques, please do. I'm more than happy to help you. So someone sent me a message. They said, we're running a DOE, but the outcome is pass and fail. What do we do? Now, the first thing to say, of course, about pass fail is normally, if you were going to get a sample size, if you wanted to understand how well or badly a process is running, let's say a new product introduction, you need a sample size of a thousand pieces. This is the problem with pass fail. I know we love it. We're out of production and we look at a data point. What do we want to know? Is it intolerance or out of tolerance? And we treat it then as pass fail. The minute you treat data as pass fail, you destroy the information that's in it. So if what you have, of course, isn't pass fail, it's measurable, you know, so I don't know if you're weighing the weight in a food pack, 250 grams, 251 grams, etc. That's measurable. If it's measurable data, the same sample, of course, is 30 to 50. And that's normally what we want available in a DOE we normally want 30 to 50 available. So what happens if you're here? So here's my three pieces of advice in solving this particular problem. The first piece of advice is this, create a grade. And by the way, should be five grades. So the scale should go from one to five, A to E, whatever you want to call it, but one to five, because we want numbers in the DOE, but there should be at least five grades. So what you're doing there, if you were looking at the printing on this pen, for example, and you go, well, the printing has got defects in it, and we're not going to send that to the customer. What you should do is print the labels, do the DOE, print the labels, Take the worst one you've got and put it over here. Take the best one you've got and put it over here. And then line all the pieces. In other words, you've got 50 pieces maybe. Line the 50 pieces up from worst to best. And then on the table go, this group of 10 will be one. This group of 10 will be two, etc and grade everything. Now, obviously, when you do this, you need to make sure you know where every test piece came from, because you're gonna say for treatment number two, here's the grading we created. For treatment number three, here's the grading that we created. Okay, so choice number one, create a grade. Works very well, by the way, especially when you grade them visually like that. The measurement system is gonna be quite good because obviously you can see the worst, you can see the best, and you're, you're grading everything relative to one another, works really well. What's number two? Number two, this was the, the advice that I gave, so I said grade. Number two is run the thousand. I know people don't wanna do this, but run the thousand, how, how expensive is the are the pieces so if the pieces aren't expensive and they're not difficult to make i know you don't want to do the thousand and it's a bit more difficult to then grade them all and it takes more time maybe 
But you know, if you've got a problem and you're producing defects all the while, or if you've got new product introduction and you wanna make the machine go faster and better, think about it. You're gonna commit a thousand pieces for the next million. That's cheap. That's a cheap day at the office right there. So if this is, if this is possible, it's not too, too onerous, run the thousand and then work out the defect rate for each treatment. And then of course, do the DOE on the defect rate and go from there. So there's option number two, just, okay, it's pass fail and I gotta get a thousand. I'll produce a thousand cause I can. Option number three, this is an interesting one. I've seen this work really well, is this one. Pick a winner. Pick a winner out of the DOE treatments. Now, remember what you're doing. You're testing a design space. Let's say it's a three-dimensional design space. So you have three factors, time, temperature, and pressure. So you've tested the eight corners. Because it's pass-fail, what you're going to ask the model to do is to maximize or minimize. So you're either gonna ask it to maximize the yield or you're gonna ask it to minimize the defect rate. What that means is usually you are gonna drive the model into a corner. In other words, you are going to drive the model to one of the treatments that you carried out during the DOE. So, here's what you do, look. Let's put a little, let's put a little pattern up here. Okay, so there's factor A, there's factor B. This is just a two factor experiment. You run the experiment. Let's say you run 10 per treatment. All right, so across this way here, we have 10 pieces for each of the four. So we've got 40 data points, essentially. Now, when you do this, you'll get, obviously you'll get pass fail um, because that's what we started off with. So what do you do? Well, what you do is you look at the four treatments and you look at your 10 tests and maybe Maybe the red ones are defects, all right? So if we've got red ones, they're defective. If we've got green ones, they're good ones, okay? So you look across the row and you pick a winner. Okay, so. So when you look at this, one of the four, so you look at this and you go, well, we've got two treatments that have got quite a lot of defects in there, over 50%, over 50% defective or around 50% defective. Then I've got two treatments that look pretty good. This one's still got a defect in there. This one is showing no defects in there. Well. Give it a go. Pick a winner. It's a corner point. It's a corner point. It's going to be a corner point anyway with with this type of uh, this type of problem where you're trying to maximise or minimise. So you're going to be in a corner point. So you might as well just look at the date and go. Well, that looks good. I'll pick a winner and I'll have a go. You put it in because now what you do is you run a bigger sample size. So now you run three hundred or you run production. You run a production. Um, you're on a production batch and you see what that corner point setting is actually giving you. And there is a good, and of course at that point, it's gonna tell you a true data. So at that point, it's gonna say, well, out of the 300 we made or the 500 we made, we had a 1% defect rate or a 10% defect rate or whatever the reality of the situation is. So it's probably not gonna be as good as that for the 10 that you made, but pick a winner is the other choice. So practical ways of dealing with pass fail 
when you're doing a designed experiment and of course what that means is really the mathematics wants a thousand pieces and that's sometimes not possible what are your options I've seen this work really well by the way not with as many as ten I think four something like that so a welding process uh, it was 16 runs so it wasn't uh, three factors it was four factors and literally they just looked at the pattern they picked a winner they put the the, uh, the values in they got a much better response than they'd been getting with their original settings and at the end of the day if you do a test and you improve that's got to be great I know you haven't got defect free at that point but maybe that's the next maybe that's the next test maybe there's another test to be done but your three choices for pass fail create a grade run the thousand or pick a winner and if you can do those do a great designed experiment you are definitely going to learn something about your process and you are going to learn to make more money